Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about how to use balance scorecard to measure the information security strategy. How this particular document, how this particular formula used by CISOs to align their information security strategy with the organization strategy. How this particular template is basically used to measure how much we have aligned with the information security strategy. Sorry, how much we align with the business objective. Nowadays, a lot of CISOs are basically using this particular metric. So I thought, let me make a short video on that. And if you are a CISO or aspiring CISO, it is very important for you to know this particular template. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. If you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So if you go by the introduction, it is it is called as a strategic planning and management system, which is uh, the organization used to align the business activities with the vision and strategy of the organization. It is also used to improve your internal external communication and monitor the organization performance against the strategic goal. Along with that, it was introduced in the early 1990s by Mr. Dr. Robert Carl Kaplan and Dr. David Norton. Okay, so this is not a security framework. This is not something is a security tool. It is a management tool which is used by CISOs in their information security. Okay, thank you so much. See, when you're talking about the balance scorecard, okay, it basically cover the four perspective. Okay, if you're introducing anything in the organization, it should basically cover the four perspective. And balance scorecard also cover the four perspective. First is called financial perspective. It's not about sequence. It is just a four perspective. First is called financial perspective, which measure how well the business is performing financially. Second is basically customer perspective, which talk about uh, the metrics to measure how much customers are satisfied. Third is basically internal process, which talk about how well the business is executing its key process. And fourth is basically called learning growth, which basically measure the business investment and its employee and its ability to innovate. So let's understand in a more layman perspective. Suppose we created an information security strategy. Okay, so we have created an information security strategy. Now, information security strategy basically have a uh, incident management process. Okay, so we have an incident management process. Now, on the other side, uh, we basically have a uh, change management process or patch management process. Okay, so we have a multiple process. We have a incident management process. We have a chain management process. Okay, we have a patch management process. So these are the process we have. Okay, now to improve. So this is the process. If the process is basically effective, suppose let's take example. We, are, we as a CISO, we saying okay, we need to have an incident management program. Fine. So it is a process which is introduced in a security. So by make the process effective, how to make process effective? If we have a right tool, okay, if we have a trained professional. So according to learning and growth, I need to upskill my employees to learn the new ransomware attacks. I need to upskill my employees to learn about the new tools. By that, I can able to improve my incident response process. By improving the incident response process, I can able to improve and reduce the incident issues. And by reducing the incident issues, I can able to gain the trust of the customer. I can able to create more value. And by creating a more value, I can able to create more margins Okay, in the profits. And that create a value for the business. So this is how you can see your one initiative of information security Okay, map with four verticals. Let's take another example is com uh, the company has decided to go for virtualization. So from a security point of view, we're creating a security strategy that we need a cloud security controls. We need appropriate security controls on the cloud environment and all that. So first thing is that I need to train people how to secure the cloud. According to that, I need to introduce a cloud security process. From that point of view, I can able to improve more customer satisfaction because service is now accessible from anywhere. So instead of having a now 17 resources, we have a 10 resources with the cloud based solution. I can able to improve the profit of the company. So this is how my strategy is basically cover all the four dimensions. Okay. So that is how the information security strategy is basically used to map with the balance scorecard. 
not understood let me explain you with the reference so here we have a template so let me explain you so here we have a template which basically give you the perspective about balance scorecard here you can see learning and growth so when we're talking about learning and growth it basically talk about you know do we get a best deal for the organization okay or do we continue to improve and create a value now second is basically internal process how effective is my internal process we have an internal process because it can able to excel our services because of the internal perspective internal process are great we can able to see our customer success and if we able to see our customer success there is an increase in the profit which basically increase the perspective of finance so customer perspective learning growth perspective financial perspective internal process perspective is directly connect with basically my vision and mission so if you see that example here this is the example we have we have a strategy okay so this is the reference we have taken from david book derived from the kaplan and norton so we have a strategy okay so we have a question is if we succeed how we look at our st stakeholders or shareholders so customer is basically to achieve our vision how how must we look at our customer third is basically internal is to satisfy customer what business process we must be excel so this is a process we have and to achieve our vision how must our organization learn and improve the things so as i said we are one planning to go for mssp managed service provider for that i need to first train my people by training the people i can able to improve my internal soc process internal incident response process and all that by which i can able to build more trust among the customer by train more customers by build more customer trust and all that i can able to improve my finance and that is basically the end goal we have that is a strategy road map same thing we have seen here see improve customer satisfaction broaden skill and reward system alignment that's a process and training on base on that we understand the customer segment we develop the offering we have a cross sell product line by this we increase the customer confidence by increasing customer confidence it directly have a positive impact on the revenue by having a positive impact on the revenue it improve my financial returns so when you bring your security strategies and other perspective with this kind of a vertical you get a better visibility understood so that is how you need to align the things now when you're talking about purpose of balance scorecard so purpose of balance scorecard is to basically uh, balance and provide the value for information security strategy okay so the first perspective is called as a holistic view so balance scorecard provide the comprehensive view of the organization information security posture this is what we have we're talking about the posture here because when we have a balance scorecard it giving a four dimension right so it talk about the posture it encompass your financial it talk about the customer it talk about the internal process and learning growth second is because we having a balance scorecard we can able to align better with the business objective because we can ensure the information security initiatives align with the broader business objective and ensure that security does not operate in a silos as i said na we have a we need a incident management process ciso cio definitely ask or ceo definitely why we need that so we giving them the four dimensions of that particular process so by having the balance scorecard we can able to ensure the security does not operate in a silo but support the overall business strategy third is basically called as a performance measurement definitely so if we have a incident management process okay how effective is the process that's a goal so we basically introduce the kpi okay so we introduce the kpi so kpi is basically number of incident we able to close number of incidents we able to manage okay mean time to detect the incident so all those things we basically have a vertical is it clear so by having this incident management process okay and their associate matrix we can able to track how it basically creating a value okay so performance measurement so scorecard allow the measurement of a performance against the predefined objectives which helping to identify the area of improvement so with the help balance scorecard we also get another important visibility is called resource allocation by understanding which area are performing well and which need improvement so resource can be allocated more effectively and last it also help in understanding and managing risk from the various perspective to ensure you know well rounded uh, risk management approach we have so overall it's it's a very good approach now question is how the ciso can use balance scorecard so here the ciso can basically use the balance scorecard from the point of view of uh, strategy formulations here we have strategy 
formulations because a CISO can use a scorecard to formulate the robust information security strategy, which can be aligned with the business goal. Second is the scorecard basically allow uh, the CISO to track the performance of various security initiatives, ensuring they're delivering the desired outcome. I will show you the template I have. Okay. Third, it is basically give them better visibility in terms of stakeholder communication. It provides a structured way for the CISO to communicate other stakeholders, including a board about status and effectiveness of the security program. Then it is also helpful in continuous improvement by regularly updating and reviewing the scorecard. CISO can drive the continuous improvement in the organization security posture. And last but not the least, it can be used for the budgeting and investments. Okay, it can inform the decision about where to invest the resource for the maximum impact. So question is basically, uh, you know, how to do that? Okay, that's a question. So answer of that question will get in this slide, how to map how to create strategy with balance scorecard. So the first step is you need to define your strategy which is basically the requirement we have. You need to define your strategy. What are your overall security goal? What specific objectives do you need to achieve in order to meet those goals? Then you need to identify the four perspective of the balance scorecard. Okay, these are financial, customer, internal process, learning and growth perspective. We're going to discuss with the case study. Okay, so that you get a better visibility. Third, you need to develop the objective for each perspective that is aligned with your security strategy. Let's take example, if, you, if one of your security goal is to reduce cost of security incident, you might develop an objective to reduce the total cost of security incident by 10%. So by reducing 10%, uh, you reduce the incident issues. By this, you can increase the profit and you can also increase the customer satisfaction. Then after defining the objectives and all that, the next important thing is identify measures for each objective. objective. Okay, so these metrics can be used to track your progress toward achieving your objective. For example, you track your progress toward reducing the total cost of security incident. So you might track the number of security incidents that occur and the average cost of each incidents. So that's something you can basically plan. Then you can basically set the target for each measure. So there are specific values you want to achieve for each measure. For example, you might set the target for reducing the total cost of security incident by 1 million or 10 million. So that is basically the set target we have. Then you develop the initiatives to achieve your objective. So these are the specific action that you will take to improve the security posture and reduce the risk of security incident. For example, you might develop initiatives to implement a new security awareness training for, for employees. So that is a process you're introducing. And then you can basically track your progress and make the adjustment as needed because balance scorecard is a living document. It should be reviewed and updated regularly to ensure it is aligned with your security strategy and that you are making a progress toward the objective. So to understand better, let's have a case study. So we have a case study here is Aspirants is a growing e-commerce platform with a significant online customer base. Okay, so that is what we have. And uh, <clears throat> while increasing a number of cyber threats, the company want to ensure the security of its customer data, maintain trust and ensure the smooth operation. So they decided to use balance scorecard framework to build the company and security strategy. So what we do from a financial perspective, objective is to reduce the cost associated with the security incident. We discussed that from a customer perspective, we ensure the customer trust by safeguarding their data from the internal perspective, improve the incident response time. Definitely by improving this particular process by which we can able to improve the in incident response time, we can able to achieve the financial perspective where we reduce the cost and we can able to gain trust of the customer or you can able to by, by having an effective incident response process, we can able to build the trust and by building a trust, we can able to reduce the cost associated with the security incident and we can able to generate good number of profit. And last is basically for that, you need to be updated with the cybersecurity trends and all that. So how to understand that? So this is the balance scorecard function we have, we have taken here. Suppose if I basically trained my security professionals to be updated with the new trends, new attacks, new alerts, and I'm able to build the security aware culture. By that, I can able to improve my incident management process. I can able to improve my vulnerability management process. By improving the vulnerability management process, suppose by 10%, that is basically my KPI. I can able to reduce the cost associated with the incident, and I can able to allocate the budget for cybersecurity. Based on that, I can able to maintain the platform integrity availability that build the customer trust and also with the help of effective process i can able to enhance the customer trust by safeguarding a data 
So here you can see one perspective is directly related to the other perspective. So by using this balanced scorecard framework, aspirant can ensure the holistic approach to its security strategy, balancing the financial consideration, customer trust, and also efficiently improve their internal process and continuous learning growth in the realm of information security. I have one more diagram here you can see, which gave you the idea about how it related. Suppose uh, by improving the knowledge of the security professional, okay, I can Im also improving the knowledge and improving the effective solutions. And I basically make my people to be stay updated with the latest trend and all that. By that I can able to improve their business process. I can able to improve the resiliency and I can able to enhance the vulnerability management process. By that what happen is I can able to ensure un uninterrupted service delivery to my customer. I can able to gain trust of the customer. By gaining a trust, by gaining a trust, what I can do is I can able to improve the profit, I can increase the revenue, and I can able to reduce the financial impact. So here you can see one particular perspective is directly related with the another perspective. So here, if I go by the process again, let me um, let me take the back side. So here we can see. So if you can see the process here. <coughs> Let me change the color. Okay, so here I say by improving a knowledge, what I did is okay, by improving a knowledge, I can able to improve the internal process. By having a right skill with improved knowledge, I can able to improve the resiliency. I can improve the knowledge by the improving the knowledge. I can able to improve the resiliency by stay updating with my current threats and all that. I can able to enhance my vulnerability management process because I'm able to improve my vulnerability management process proactively. I can able to detect the incidents and by which I can able to enhance my customer trust by improving a process and able to detect the incident on a timely basis, I can able to ensure the unended service delivery. Because of that, customer build the trust. We have another important thing. Customer trust has been increased. Okay, so my goal for this year is to increase the customer trust by 10%. And then based on that, I can able to improve the profits and all that. So understand more in detail. I can show you one uh, template. Okay, so that give you the better visibility about this process. Team, uh, this is how the template I have created. It's a very raw template. Here you can see every perspective I map with the KPI. So here you can see learning and growth. Okay, so I say about uh, stay updated with the current evolving cybersecurity trend. That is basically my objectives. Okay, now here what happened? Okay, sorry. So here what happened? Uh, you know, I basically set the functions. Just give me a second. So here what happened is when I stay updated with the evolving cybersecurity trend and uh, I'm able to cultivate the, you know, increase the employee security awareness training. So that is basically my objective we have. So that is objective we have set. To measure that, we set the matrix is number of uh, security awareness training and the engagement level with the cybersecurity community. So this is something we basically set here. And here I set the value also. Example, my target was 10%, achieve basically 9%, so I'm on track. Okay, so as, as, as I say, it's a live document prepared by the CISO. Then we have say, increase employee security awareness training by 10% and number of employees who have been trained. So that is a measure. The target was 1000, actual was 1000. We exceed the target because according to per month, we set the value. Here we can see because of that, we able to improve the security posture of the company infrastructure. So 10% that is basically my objective and uh, the security posture what we have here is you can see security posture is basically the measure 70% is basically target actual was 75 okay so we are on track so this is how we setting the KPIs okay current state desired state and current state so by this way we can able to give the visibility about what is happening is it clear? So it's basically important to understand this, this perspective and all that. And according to that, you can take a call. The same thing we have here. Okay, if you basically go by the process, you can have a same matrix here. 
we're talking about objective of reduce cost associated with the security objective for that we define the measure for customer perspective we define the measure for internal process perspective we define the measure for learning growth we define the measure so that's something we can able to do that even in this space if you can see reduce the cost associated with the security incident so we can basically set the kpi here KPIs decrease the cost related to the data breach remediation and uh, reduction in the potential regulative fine. That is a fine. So what is the initiatives? We talk about initiatives, for example, invest in the proactive security measure or regularly review and update the cybersecurity insurance policy. Then we have a customer objective is basically ensure customer trust by safeguarding the data. So for that, we set the KPI like reduction in the customer complaints and increase in the customers using an enhanced security feature. Initiative is that we implement the end to end and promote the use of multi-factor authentication. Then we have an internal process which say improve the incident response time. So we can improve by average time to detect number of incident resolve and initiative is 24 into 7 SOC and conduct the regular incidents response deal. And last is basically learning and growth. We have set the objectives, stay updated with the evolving, where we define the percentage of cybersecurity people trained on that, feedback scores, launch company-wide cybersecurity awareness workshop. So moral of the story is that we can basically use this perspective and we can create this Excel sheets. So this is what we happen. Okay. So we can, we can basically create this Excel sheet and by which we can able to improve the function. Here you can see financial is there, improve margin by 10% measure. So this is how we can able to create a Excel sheet. So this is all from my side. Do let me know how do you find this video and uh, i'm happy to answer your questions in the comment box and do let me know shall i made more videos on a CISO series so this is all from my side my name is prab for more information do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic good day bye